Um, I think by-elections generally are not great barometers when it comes to general elections. There are lots of variables. There was a lot of tactical voting going on here. Clearly, the Labour Party will crow about it, and they've got every right to. They've done well. It's a spectacular result. Um, and Why they do you are... say they and not we? I thought that you was uh, Labour through and through. Well, well, I am, but I like to maintain an air of impartiality on, on your show, Michelle. OK, oh, right. but listen, I'll, I'll nail my colours to the mast. Yeah, we, we should crow about it because we've got a good result up there, although I'm certainly not a starmer, right? Let me be clear about that. Um, and the Labour Party clearly are the favourites for the next election, but I, I suspect, really, this is not a 1997-type moment. Um, I think some people in the Labour Party are assuming it is. And we all knew, you know, weeks and months and years, to be honest, in advance of the 97 election that the Labour Party was going to storm it because the Tories were a busted flush. I don't think this is quite the same thing. I don't think that the Labour Party at the moment have sealed the deal with the British electorate in the way that I think Tony Blair did well in advance of the 97 election. And I think when it comes to the election next year, probably what we're more likely to see is something like the Australian election last year, where the Labour Party won it, but not because they inspired anybody, but simply because they were seen as, as the least bad of, of, of a number of bad options, to be perfectly blunt. Uh, and the Labour Party, I think, are probably relying on the fact that at the moment, they certainly did in Scotland, that the SNP imploded, and that gives them a way back into Scotland, and relying on the fact that the Tories themselves have imploded. I'm not convinced that's enough. I think you need to set out a bold alternative to convince people to vote for you, and I'm not clear what Labour's bold alternative is. And I don't think they've yet convinced the British public of what their alternative is. Well, the Tories also got absolutely battered. We're talking less than 4%. We're talking deposit loss territory. Um, how do you think that, uh, well, you are again a Tory, how are you guys feeling today? Are you licking wounds or are you just saying, hey, it's one of those things? Well, the first thing any Conservative feels today is that they are thrilled that the SNP got smashed and that the, um, the union between Scotland and England is uh, safer than it was before. And credit to the Labour Party, they did a good job and they are a unionist party and they are to be preferred to the SNP for just those reasons when it comes to a vote um, in Scotland. So congratulations to them. I've always thought that people are struggling in this country between... Um, not having a reason to vote Conservative, and I don't think Rishi gave them the reasons they were looking for last week, I'm but afraid. did you? Did you leave that conference uh, feeling I wasn't there underwhelmed? In, I wasn't there in person, but I didn't feel that he'd set out the vision, and I don't see the coherence of those policies... And that, there was no bounce in the polls, I that, he, um, ..that he set out. I don't see that vision that was set out in those policies, and I don't think he sealed the deal, but they haven't, um, nor have they um, wanted to vote for Starmer whom they find uh, dull, changeable, willing to say anything. What I think we see maybe today, the beginning, after the Conservative Party conference, going into the Labour Party conference, great hinge, this election's great hinge between the two, it is just possible that people are starting to tumble onto the Starmer side and saying, we don't really like either of them, but we might give him a chance. John, one of my viewers, says, we live in Scotland. We are overjoyed. The SNP are on their way out. yee mm. he says. That's his ex exact words. But, yeah. uh, but Steve says, I live in Scotland too. And the Labour win is just a lesser of two evils, he says. I do not think they would get as many seats as projected at the general election. And he has a different view to John. He says the SNP still have a massive following. Uh, and... Uh, Another John says that he feels that nobody really won. Apathy won. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, to... People to, are just bored of the, either all of the main parties or just bored of politics more generally, or what? Um, I, I think it's more that... I don't think it's necessarily that people are apathetic about politics. I think they often feel that politicians are apathetic about them. Um, that actually they are... And this was largely, I think, what led to the Brexit vote, where you had millions of people in this country, particularly in what you might call small-town Britain, Britain beyond the fashionable cities and the university towns, um, post-industrial Britain, blue-collar Britain, who just felt for years that they were unrepresented at the upper echelons of British politics, who, you know, the, the main parties, particularly during Cameron's time and, and Blair and Brown, just kind of coalesced around this radically progressive agenda. Um, and ordinary, if you like, small-c conservative people out there, including lots of Labour voters who would regard themselves as small-c conservative, um, 
didn't feel that they were represented and didn't feel that anybody spoke for them. So I, I think when you actually go to these places, especially working class communities, you, you do actually find people are interested in politics. They, they do want to play a part uh, in debating politics. They know that politicians make decisions that affect their lives. They want some influence over that. But if you've got a political class that just doesn't listen to you, um, then it's no wonder that you do probably, you know, dip out of it because you think, well, what's the point? Basically? And what did you think to Alex Salmond, what he was saying earlier, um, that he thinks uh, Hamza Youssef basically a couple of days to save his kind of leadership to demonstrate that he is the right person for the job. Do you agree with that or not? Well, I don't know. But I mean, Hamza Youssef was put in and got in precisely as Nicola Sturgeon's continuity candidate. Um, he was carrying on the Sturgeon tradition. Um, Alex Salmond, of course, hates that because he hates everything to do with Nicola Sturgeon, who tried to put him in jail or whatever I was going on at the time on all those trials that were going on. So he's always been against Hamza Yusuf. Well, I can't say what the Scottish people think of him compared to, um, to other people, but he's pursued this government for independence programme, whereas I think a, a huge number of Scots in a cost of living crisis watching um, ordinary functions of government fall to pieces around them would rather have a Scottish government didn't that was sorting out problems rather than campaigning for independence. Didn't Alex Salmond, am I right in thinking this, uh, didn't he report Rishi Sunak to the police about some comments, um, apparently jokes that yeah. he made uh, about Sturgeon? I believe that's the case. Conference? What do you think to that? Well, anyone is entitled to vote to, pro to report anything they like to the police. It's a free country. It's what the police, country, what the police do about country. it, what the police do about it is another matter altogether.